Good evening, everyone. We are ready to start. Please take a seat. As we are uh, already beyond schedule for the beginning of this session, we are uh, starting now. Welcome, everyone, to the Capacity Building Hub. Good evening. My name is Roberta Jan. I'm uh, one of the co-chairs, together with my colleague Yongxian, of the Paris uh, Committee on Capacity Building, the PCCB, which by now you, all of you know very well. And uh, I really welcome you uh, to this very special occasion where... Um, We'll focus uh, on the work of the PCCB presenting the pilot phase of the PCCB network uh, and the results and evaluation of it. So let's um, take a look to the slide. First and foremost, let me introduce you the PCCB. The Paris Committee on Capacity Building was established at COP21 in 2015 and seeks to address current and emerging gaps and needs in implementing and further enhancing capacity building in developing countries. The PCCB work areas include uh, enhancing coherence and coordination on capacity building under the Convention and the Paris Agreement, identifying uh, current and emerging uh, capacity gaps and needs uh, and recommending ways to address them. And uh, three, promoting awareness raising, knowledge and information sharing and stakeholder engagement. Okay, the next slide. To support PCCB's mission and mandate, the committee launched the PCCB network in 2020 as a voluntary association of interested uh, stakeholders engaged in climate-related uh, capacity building work and activities. And the, the PCCB network provides a platform to share information on best practices and contributes to the work of the PCCB in fulfilling its mandate, besides also seeking to connect with its peers across the sectors and regions. Under the umbrella of the PCCB work areas, the PCCB network activities can be clustered as follows. Technical first, technical exchanges and peer learning, such as webinars and workshops. Second, communication and outreach uh, through products like newsletters, uh, stories, podcasts, interviews, and postcards. And third, networking and engagement uh, as uh, per all members' meetings, regional meetups, uh, survey, and open calls for proposals. As you could, should see in this slide, <laughs> Well, then I'll, the network uh, engages with a diverse range of organizations which spans the globe. And uh, we regularly mobilize the expertise of the network members uh, at the international level to the, through the Capacity Building Hub at COPS. And we are currently in the final day of the fourth edition of the Capacity Building Hub. And at regional level to, through PCCB side events at the UNFCCC Regional Climate Weeks. Uh, the PCCB delivers its side events in collaboration uh, with its network uh, here and at the regional weeks. And the network, uh, much like the hub, uh, is a platform for representation and collaboration. Uh, as said, uh, the PCCB network's members span not only across regions, uh, but also across sectors. And uh, given the PCCB working group two on cross-cutting issues focuses on integrating cross-cutting issues, uh, such as gender responsiveness, human rights, indigenous people knowledge and youth, uh, you can see that the network engages with a number of organizations and institutions uh, focusing on mainstreaming one one of more of these cross-cutting issues uh, in their work. With the end of the pilot phase of the PCCB network, as of today, the network unites uh, 30, uh, 312 organizations that work uh, in and address several areas of capacity building in the context of climate action. 
and um, the growth of the network over the year, uh, as you can imagine, has been impressive since uh, 2020. And uh, if your institution or organization works on capacity building for climate action and you would like to join uh, our growing numbers, uh, uh, please uh, uh, join the PCCB network. It's very easy. It's uh, about just uh, filling a form uh, on the web page uh, of the PCCB on the web PCC of the UNFCCC web website, or just uh, um, scanning uh, this uh, QR code that you can see in the slide. And. Before I continue, let me first explain what the pilot phase of the network entails and how we conducted the evaluation. The PCCB network was launched in its pilot phase in April 2020 and since then has conducted regular communication with members of the PCCB and its network to enhance the planning and outcomes of the network activities. The evaluation framework for the, the pilot phase of the PCCB network to measure progress from March 2020 to November 2022 includes uh, three streams of evaluation. The first being an overview of the pilot phase, uh, which included evaluating reports and surveys developed uh, since the network's inception. Second, qualitative feedback through a series of questionnaires uh, with active and inactive network members that joined uh, from 2020 onwards, and a third, as a result-based assessment, uh, and, and third, a, a result-based assessment of the varied pilot phase activities. Today, we seek to present some of the outcome of the evaluation of the PCCB network pilot phase, and the report will be launched on December 1st. Uh, and, and published on the website. So you will have here as a quick uh, sneak peek of it. Following feedback from network members, uh, the modality of activities uh, transition to a more member-led and collaborative approach uh, as the relationship between the members developed. By reviewing uh, the 15 PCCB network events uh, held since 2020, the technical exchanges and peer and peer learning activities have covered different cross-cutting issues. But of course, uh, there is always room for improvement. PCCB network events uh, had a strong focus on action for climate empowerment, uh, for short ACE. And yesterday, for those of you who were here, um, we had uh, the hub themed after the ACE uh, process with lots of uh, uh, events uh, focusing on building capacities uh, uh, on the ACE elements. And the focus on gender also was... Uh, involved in uh, one third of uh, all the events uh, we held, uh, followed by youth, uh, indigenous people, and human rights, respectively. In the assessment of network activities of the pilot phase evaluation, the performance of the different activities was measured with the individual threshold in um, awareness raising and engagement, uh, inclusive, uh, inclusiveness and diversities, and convening stakeholders. As an example of how the network activities were assessed, we are having a look at the technical exchanges and peer learning activities here in the slide you can see. And for the events hosted by the PCCB network in collaboration with its network members, all three dimensions uh, improved significantly from 2020 to 2022 as the latest uh, events from this year uh, exceeded previous expectations, especially the assessment dimension of convening stakeholders, uh, we can say, really improved after making a member-member collaboration necessary. More uh, and detailed information of the assessment outcomes uh, and other activities uh, will be available uh, in the report um, uh, mentioned to be published on uh, December 1st. As you can see here, part of the evaluation process included receiving qualitative feedback and the capacity building team 
uh, which support the PCCB work, reached out to a range of active and inactive members with a questionnaire to assess their experience as member of the network. So we are happy, uh, happy to say that 77% uh, of the respondents were classified as active members because they had collaborated on a PCCB network activity or product such as the newsletter or the CB Story podcast series and or contributed to the capacity building hub here at COP. While 23% 20, uh, of the respondents identified as youth and 8% identified as member of indigenous people. These figures show us that the PCCB network has led to an overall positive experience for members when it comes to participating in or leading PCCB network activities collaboration with other, and collaboration with other member organizations. The PCCB network is a reflection of its members and their work. And here in this slide you can see a few of the testimonials that we have collected throughout this process with feedbacks from some of the active members. And after this short overview of the evaluation process of the pilot phase of the PCCB network, I'm glad to give the mic to my Hello, co-chair of the PCCB, Yang Chang. Please, Yang Chang. Uh, thank you, Roberta, and good uh, afternoon, colleagues. Yeah. Uh, continue. What? Continue. I would like to introduce more about the the, the, the PCCB network. As you know, the the, PC, the network transitions out of its pilot phase under the umbrella of the PCCB network. We want to continue fostering and facilitating collaboration and partnership and capacity building landscape, particularly highlighting the role and the need for the network of um, networks. The PCCB seeks to continue strengthening its regional work by collaborating with network members as well as faci facilitating source, source, source nodes and north nodes collaborations. At the international level, the PCCB would continue to keep this capacity building hub a space for representation and uh, collaboration, drawing from expertise of its network members and providing a space for PCCB network members to present and discuss their capacity building work. Well, we, we, we should say that PCCB network and it is a PCCB pandemic baby since we did, we did a lot of work virtually. Uh, we would like to thank all the network members that have been with us so far and welcome new ones that have and will be joining us. The PCCB would also like to thank the capacity building team uh, of the UNFCCC in their support right from the launch and their efforts to relate it to the day-to-day -day functioning of the network over this, uh, this difficult pandemic years. Next slide. Uh, the, sixth, the, sixth, uh, the seventh meeting of the PCCB will be held at the June session of the subsidi subsidiary body for implementation. And we welcome all ob observers who might be PCCB network members to contribute. The concept note for the fifth capacity building hub will be presented there for there, followed by a call for expression interest in August. We encourage network members to submit their capacity building events for the fifth capacity building hub next year. Uh, the PCCB invite parties and non-party stakeholders to submit their suggestion on its work on this year's PCCB focus area related to enhance uh, enhanced technique exchange on capacity building under the topic uh, building capacity to facilitate the coherent implementation of national determined contributions in the context of national development plans and uh, sustainable recovery and falls under the theme of today's hub themes uh, events. Here, uh, next slide maybe. 
Uh, here you can see the PCCB network members that contributed to this hub. And the PCCB welcomes network members to submit to the next call under the topic of capacity building support for adaptation with a focus on addressing gaps and needs relating to formulating and implementing national adaptation plans, which is the PCCB's focus area for 2023. So, uh, uh, at this point, I would like to stop our introduction and uh, I want to open the floor for any questions related with the PCCB network. The floor is open and colleagues, please let me know if you have any question. Please. please. Uh, take the mic. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm in the first time I should uh, speak first. I am, my name is Abdul Hadi. I am from Af my name is Abdul Hadi, and I am from Afghanistan. And I am the only person attending CAP conference from my country. The only person, and we do not have any other political delegation here. So from PCB, I have learned a lot, and also I expect a lot. As much as I learned, as much as I expect more. So, yeah, it is good to be partnered with PCCB from Afghanistan. My organization is the only organization which is partnered here. And here how I have some accesses, like uh, we, uh, I have access to be partnered with the Terran Project, which is uh, centered, uh, um, which is in Santa Clara University in the United States. And from that partnership, we have uh, um, gained lots of achievements, and uh, we are like uh, collaborating with each other. And in, from this partnership, uh, I also learned lots of things from uh, other countries, especially in capacity building hubs, online programs that we are conducting. So I specifically will not have a question, but the only thing that I have to say is I expect more from PCB. And I would like to do something, anything that is in my part, in my country, in my region. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your uh, for introducing yourself, for your comments, and uh, we really look forward uh, to um, doing more also as uh, PCCB for uh, uh, for parties, uh, for uh, countries uh, also ask the PCCB support. The PCCB does not really have a mandate to work uh, in countries, but uh, um, working on uh, enhancing coherence and coordination, we can certainly um, help uh, uh, some exchanges uh, and, and, and some support to happen and I'm very happy to say that uh, um, also like internally um, we are working uh, um, better and better. We just had today an informal coordination group meeting with other constituted bodies representative. We also had the specific uh, uh, bilaterals uh, with the representative of uh, the facilitative working group of the local communities and the indigenous people platform and uh, the tech uh, to, to, to really uh, see what concretely we can do to advance uh, capacity building efforts and address gaps and needs in capacity building. So again, thank you. We are um, willing to do uh, more and more. The PCCB um, regularly also uh, produce uh, um, papers uh, that uh, we hope are useful to uh, parties and to members of the PCCB network, such as the toolkit to address uh, um, to evaluate uh, capacity gaps and needs uh, for the implementation of the Paris Agreement and the technical paper for uh, the ownership, uh, for capacity building ownership uh, in countries. Uh, and um, 
The PCCB is always open to receive uh, voluntary submissions, so going to the PCCB page of the UNFCCC website, it's possible to uh, look at everything we are doing, the four working groups, uh, what are we, we are uh, uh, delivering also in collaboration with other constituted bodies, and it, there is also the uh, email address where to send uh, suggestions, uh, and uh, submissions uh, and also to um, to respond to the call for submissions that uh, the PCCB regularly issues. So thank you again and hopefully we'll be in touch. I don't know, please. Thank you very much. Uh, I am uh, Gansham Siboren and I am the president of Falcon Association former in agriculture and livestock. I have been the members since uh, the beginning. And uh, it's the first time that uh, we are meeting uh, physically because uh, I think uh, we, I cannot uh, travel to COP uh, at Grants Road. And uh, for my views, uh, I, I, I want to have more support and uh, if we can have a more meeting, uh, uh, physical or we can have exchange of uh, uh, project what they are doing in other countries uh, we can uh, organize such as a workshop or uh, others uh, conference uh, that uh, we met the members and share our views that I'm, I'm my suggestion and also uh, help us where because we are doing a lot of uh, work and uh, we need funds also. And uh, how we, uh, PCCB can help us to get fund or recommendation like this, uh, something like this. Okay. Thank you, thank you very much. And um, well, there is uh, lots of uh, work on going uh, on within the, the, the members of the PCCB network and uh, the PCCB uh, regularly mobilize the PCCB network members uh, with uh, uh, webinars. Uh, um, the, the PCCB itself uh, does not focus on project implementation. It's not uh, in the mandate of the PCCB, the, the PCCB but definitely within the networks, uh, the network uh, there is the chance uh, for uh, having this kind of exchanges as well. So we are also uh, looking forward to continue supporting the network uh, and enhance exchanging, uh, exchanges among the members. And thank you very much for uh, joining uh, the Capacity Building Hub uh, and, and being here with us. I don't know if there are others. Oh, one more comment, please. Yes, thank you. I'm Bob Aston from Kenya. Uh, I was just wondering because I saw your 20 2023 uh, work plan and the emphasis is around supporting countries in terms of formulation of their national adaptation plans. But I was wondering particularly if probably uh, <clears throat> PCCB is also planning to support countries which are in terms of the implementation of that uh, Glasgow work program on action for climate empowerment. Uh, because I know at the moment there are countries that are in the process of developing their learning strategies in terms of some of the short-term uh, actions around action for climate empowerment. Mm -hmm. And also I was wondering if probably part of the 2023 work plan will be to support countries around that. Well, thank you for your question. And uh, this is what we really want to do, but we can't do because uh, according to the mandate, the PCCB more is about to do, to, to help um, developing countries to identify their gaps and needs and also to, to, to avoid the duplication of what uh, is the capacity building on the ground. But uh, we have very, very limited resource to, to really but we could uh, help you to, 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 to see the chance to, can, to, uh, to access the, to those fundings, but we don't have funding for uh, a spe uh, specific project. It's, it's a pity, but, well, that's the truth. But do we really focus on this adaptation? 
work plan and uh, help to find more um, more way to uh, help countries to access to those fund for adaptation. But for sure, there is adaptation fund under the adaptation. Uh, agenda item. So that probably the way you could fund there. But here we will provide more acknowledge uh, information and experience on this on this topic. Thank you. Yes, uh, and, and just to add that um, we are sti uh, anyway working very closely with the ACE uh, process uh, and uh, in the informal coordination group meeting we had before the ACE process was represented uh, and in the new action plan of ACE uh, there are references uh, to strengthen the work and uh, collaboration with constituted bodies so we will have the chance to work uh, with the ACE process uh, uh, more and more. But as uh, uh, as Yon Shan said, uh, um, the, 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 the PCCB does not really have an implementation uh, uh, mandate. So it will be about uh, enhancing uh, coherence and coordination and, uh, among uh, bodies, among uh, uh, activities related to capacity building to, 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 to support uh, a successful implementation of the Paris Agreement. Okay, if there are no other comments, you, I don't know. <laughs> Okay, so if there are no other comments, uh, I hope that uh, it has been uh, um, a fruitful and successful day for everyone uh, of you here at the Capacity Building Hub. And with this session, we conclude uh, the um, last event uh, um, of the PCCB Focus Area Day here at the fourth edition of the Capacity Building Hub at COP27. And um, which was uh, around the focus area of building capacity to facilitate the coherent implementation of nationally determined contribution and disease in the context of national development plans and sustainable recovery. Today's events feature discussions uh, on key themes on capacity building for strengthening national planning and budgeting systems, improving access to climate finance and enhancing country ownership. And we can say that also provided the space for capacity building stakeholders to share relevant experiences, good practices, tools and methodologies, as well as lessons learned. Throughout the past seven days, organizations have showcased the variety of capacity building efforts which have taken place over the year by sharing information, experiences and technical capacities to further climate action on a large scale. Please look forward to the summary report of the fourth capacity building uh, hub uh, with the key outcomes of the discussion and presentation material uh, um, that was displayed over the week uh, just uh, past. And I'll pass over the microphone to Yon Shan to officially close uh, this uh, fourth edition of the capacity building hub. Thank you, Roberta. And I should say it, uh, it has been an uh, intensive and exciting past seven days uh, with 48 events. Uh, with the guidance of the cross-cutting issue experts and support of organizations, uh, ACE and uh, your, your, your voice was mainstreaming through their dedicated thematic day on building capacity with, uh, with ACE Day on the 15th as well as on other thematic days with 22 events for ACE and uh, uh, 16 for youth. The gender was mainstreamed at 23 events. Indigenous people's knowledge was mainstreamed at seven events. And through only two events made ex explicit uh, reference to mainstreaming human rights due to the interlinked nature of human rights they were implicitly in many, in many other events. 
Thank you for the, to the International Center for Climate Change and Development and the United Nations Universities Institute for Environment and Human Security, uh, the, green, the, the Global Green Growth Institute, uh, the International Labor Organization, and the World Resource Institute. Uh, Militaries Beyond Borders and uh, Borders International, uh, the International Union for uh, Conservation of Nature, and uh, Climate for their support as lead partners in the planning and delivering of each thematic day. I would like to thank you, thanks on behalf of the PCCB and the 50, 55 different organizations that delivered events at the hub over the past seven days. Uh, you have been the clear, uh, the clear example of how climate stakeholders uh, working across different uh, sectors and regions can come together to force capacity building uh, efforts to high ambition and uh, great, greater action. We hope to see you at the fifth capacity building hub and COP28. So I would thank you with my co-chair. Thank you, you all for participating and contributing to this process. Thank you again.